Hi there. In this video, we will learn about the high points of the translog production function. Before we go ahead, if you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so that you get the updated videos. And also, you may like it if you find it useful. So we are talking about the high points of the translog production function. It should not come to us as a surprise because, just like any production function, the translog production function should also have high points. So how we can obtain these isoforms? We can fix the output just like in any isoform we have a fixed level of output. And then we can take the total differential. Here we have a two case input translog production function. So we have fixed output because you can see the Q now appears with a bar on it. So after this bar, uh, now we are going to uh, use this process of total differential. And on the left hand side, when we took that differential of this natural logarithmic form of Q, it appeared like this. And on the right hand side, we have to see that if we have labor capital, that is either of the two variables, we will have a result. Here we have labor, and that's a variable, so the result is there, which is non zero. But for this term, since there is no variable neither labor nor capital, the answer is zero. And you can refer back to the last video in which we understood the elasticity of scale of the translog production function. Following the same process, we can find these terms as the total differential of the translog production function. So you may refer back to that video. So after solving this, now we have this next step which is critical. Because in this step what we have done is we have taken dl over l terms on one side of the equation and we have kept dk over k terms on the other side of the equation. Because in this way we will be able to uh, bring the term that is dk over dl into this uh, given expression. Now I have taken dl over l a common factor in all of these three terms. As you can see this is a common factor and the remaining terms they are there. And on the right hand side I have taken dk over k as the common factor and the remaining terms they are there. Now uh, it is a convention that we write it as dk over k. So this is why I have made a mirror image of the equation and dk over k term is now on the left hand side whereas dl over l term is on the right hand side. Now what we can do is uh, we can uh, do cross multiplication and gather the dk over dk and dk over k and dl over l term here on the left hand side. Since we have brought it from the right hand side, it gets reciprocalized. We have kept this minus here as well as this term in the numerator and this term actually is in the denominator. That is the term on the right hand side. The left hand side has been brought into the denominator. So after this cross multiplication, we have the final answer in the next step where we have uh, shifted this labor and capital also to the right hand side because dk over dl that is the change in capital uh, divided by change in labor is the slope of the isoquant of any production function where it be translog production function. So it has a negative sign and that negative sign is representing that we have a negatively sloped isoquant. Just like any other production function, the slope is negatively sloped and uh, it is in logarithmic space this time because the production function is logarithmic production function. This is the answer, the left hand side of it and in other words we have the ratio of the marginal products with a negative sign as the slope of the isoquant. So this was about the isoquants of the translog production function that are quite similar to the usual uh, isoquant of any other production function. Thank you.